प्रभु तव मुरति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जेह नजर समीपे रहो हमारी एह नजर समीपे रहो हमारी एह घनश्याम महाराज नी जय हरि कृष्ण महाराज नी जय स्वामी नारायण भगवान नी जय सुप्रीम ओ माइरी आर बिलोवेड घनश्याम महाराज द पाथ मेकर टू आर लिबरेशन आर डियर पूज्य गुरु जी पूज्य संतो पूज्य भगत जी एंड ऑल ऑफ यू भक्तो जय स्वामी नारायण यू आर सब आर कोर्स नाइन नवम्बर नाइन्थ टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन Last Saturday, Pujya Niskam Swami performed a, kath a katha on Tulsi Viva. Along with that, included many, many points that were very useful for the yuvaks and yutis of Loyadam Parivar. Today, we would like to further go ahead and conduct this English uh, U.S. Sabha course katha for again course nine, November ninth. 2019 the examination for your course english will be taking place in december most likely december 14th or the week after december 21st be prepared all the courses have been shared there will be there is a total of four courses that will be uploaded and there you have the pdfs and from the pdfs the information will be asked on the exam beginning our katha revi revision swami narayan hare <clears throat> puri swami mentioned the biggest disease in the world is the letter i and we've heard of this in many many formats there is no i in team meaning the letter i completely has in direct connection with ego or aham we can say meaning me and myself all the problems in our family community friends satsang and anywhere else is because of ego of me and myself and we also can witness this factor because in our family how do fights arise all due to some kind of ego we are holding in the community made be with friends or non friends how does some kind of dispute arise it's due to some kind of ego in satsang even you're probably imagining satsang is the one place to drop our ego drop our my and me and make ourselves selfless and put others ahead of us but even in satsang due to the various different kinds of understanding one possesses one still possesses ego after coming into satsang for example if one was given a seva to do vacuum everyone else was sitting down and this person vacuums the whole floor there is some kind of ego that is attached to that person how so when someone else that's just sitting for that half an hour 45 minutes while that bhagat is doing vacuum comes up to the bhagat and says you didn't do vacuum so well that bhagat last week did really well vacuum what happens our ego becomes hurt we feel that this guy was just sitting he hasn't done anything for the 45 minutes i did all this seva and he's telling me right there me and myself caught right in the glare this is what happens even in satsang this is a very very basic example but even in satsang some kind of ego is developed and, and cultured and it is nurtured even saying as years goes by and due to that one does not get the bliss of maharaj's murti one does not get the bliss of of the satpurush just due to one factor which is ego 
to remove the ego about I, me, and myself is the hardest thing to achieve in satsang for anyone. And that is true achievement. That is bhakta panu and that is sadhuta. To become completely zero. To consider yourself to be nothing. To put everyone else ahead and you stay behind. To have others praise or to praise others and to absorb and drink insults. This is true sadhuta, meaning saintliness. True bhaktapanu, meaning this is a, a, a way a devotee would behave and a true achievement. In the world, we may achieve many things. We may achieve a doctorate. We may achieve a certificate of dentistry. We may achieve being a lawyer. We may achieve breaking world records. We may achieve having the most money in our neighborhood. We may achieve having the nicest hair. We may achieve having the nicest character but there's one achievement that is very very rare that there's one achievement that is very 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 hard to achieve and that is to become egoless out of 8 billion people currently on this earth if we look from the eyes and perspective of Bhagwan Swaminarayan, and if Bhagwan Swaminarayan certifies and passes, how many people, how many souls would pass in the eyes of Bhagwan Swaminarayan to be egoless? A handful. A handful. Not even in one percentile. Maybe even less than 0.01%. That's how rare of an achievement is to become egoless and Bhagwan Swaminarayan wants us to become egoless our Satpurush wants us to be egoless and they are trying and and making and adjusting different kind of formulas for us on a daily basis so day by day day by day we become egoless so we can become very 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 close to Bhagwan meaning we can attain some kind of oneness with God. When ego is gone, Bhagwan is there. When ego is there, Bhagwan is not there. This principle is not only in the Swaminarayan Sampradaya, but in Hinduism. And we can even say in all religions. Because that's the one thing that is diverting us. That is one thing that is taking us away from. That is one thing that is completely becoming a barrier for us and that is ego <clears throat> until one doesn't forget about oneself one cannot attain god imagine how hard that could be think about it we being on a ship we being on a ship and we being asked to jump into the water and yet we being asked to stay dry after you jump into the ocean water, even if you're wearing a wetsuit, there is always 1% of your body somewhere that the water has touched. Meaning, the wetsuit is not 100% a dry suit, if we can put it. In the same way, we, be, we going inside of the water and staying dry is, is impossible. To nothing without any kind of suit protection nothing then think about this of attaining or becoming egoless that's how hard it is just like how one can fall into the ocean and stay dry if one can attain if one can become egoless one can attain god but it's not impossible it's not impossible it is possible but there's many many different kinds of techniques that are needed to get to that base level Ali Akachar <clears throat> did everything he made sadhus he had Rajipo of Maharaj and sad the Sadguru Santo but he had ego Jiva Kachar did everything 
he donated lots of money, he did seva for Maharaj and Santo, but he also had ego. There should be nothing like egotism in Samarpan. Samarpan meaning surrendership. Where there is surrendership, there is no ego. So now, Maharaj is diluting it for us. What's the formula? Well, what's that dry suit that can keep us really dry without water even touching even 0.1%? It's the formula of Samarpan or surrendership. The more and more we surrender ourself, our mind, our body, our soul to Maharaj, to Bhagwan Swaminarayan, to his Ekandik Sadpurush, his words, the more and more we become egoless. It's a straight formula. There is no gray there. But to surrender one's mind, one's body, and one's soul, how difficult is that? For example, to surrender one's, let's start easy, to surrender one's body. You're probably thinking that Guruji told me to do this, I swept the floor, he's told me to do vacuum, I did that. He told me to, uh, you know, uh, mop the floor, I did that, very easy. The, through the body, I'm doing very well. But, suppose he tells you, you have just had one fast, no food at all one day. The next day, in the morning, you are very, very hungry. You get a nice dish of your favorite food and you sit down and there he tells you to get up. Without any kinds of thoughts developing in our mind, without any kind of doubts developing in our mind, without any kind of thoughts which will portray us to be something more in the eyes than we really are, hypocrisy, we get up and we follow and he says you go ahead and read you do not you will not have to eat again today that is surrendership through the body but that also includes the mind if one has some kind of doubts then that is not total surrendership number three through the mind <clears throat> through the mind the Satpurush has many, many ways that he can test the Mumukshu. And we can say that he can test the Mumukshu through giving various kinds of examinations, showing us something that's not there, he doesn't possess, trying, he, him, him trying to test us by thinking he has a flaw inside of him. For example, the Satpurush is nirswadi, meaning he does not have any kind of taste. Yet, when, he's, when, when we come to do his darshan, when he is eating, while he's eating, he licks his fingers. He says, oh, this is very nice. I have been having a very good time. He eats more and more. He eats for a long time, licks his fingers again in front of us. Now, if some ordinary person or soul came there, automatically they would not understand or believe that this is a Satpurush. But to keep our mind completely locked, to keep our mind completely understand that this is a Satpurush, may he be doing this or may he be doing something else. This is all his Lila Charitras. This is all just divine incidences he is doing. But in reality, he does not have any taste at all. Such kind of thought to completely keep our mind on lock, that is surrendership through the mind. And finally, through the soul, the hardest, level three, category three, very, very high security clearance needed. The soul, <clears throat> the soul has been traveling through the life cycle of death and life and death, life and death, life and death, since Bhagwan Swaminarayan. How old is Bhagwan Swaminarayan? He doesn't have an age. Because Bhagwan is never born or he does not die. Then the soul is the same. The soul is not born or does not die. Yet, 
the soul has been completely doing independent actions throughout its different various bodies may it be of a human may it be of an animal may it be of a organism may it be of a species that is unknown to man but it has been completely staying free now in this life when one achieves a satpurush one achieves a satpurush and one has to keep one's soul under that control completely for that 70 60 80 90 years and not have any kind of doubts and do exactly what the satpurush says that's when it's known that the soul has surrendered to Bhagwan and his Satpurush. That's how hard it is. Now imagine a soul that has been traveling for immoral time, doing what it wants, has to hit the brakes all of a sudden and do exactly what the Satpurush says. How hard would that be? Meaning a motorcycle going 150 miles per hour and all of a sudden hitting the front brakes. What happens? Right over. But without any kind of accidents, without anything occurring, when one has that brake in the form of samarpan, then automatically that bike slows down and stops. And that's what satsang is for. That's what uh, the association of a sadguru is for. <clears throat> I am someone else's, meaning I belong to someone. Just like how a dog harbors to its owner by respecting the leash. The dog is leashed and the owner holds the dog and they go for a walk. The dog does its business. The owner picks up the dog's business and they merely go on. but. The dog without a doubt, even if it might see other dogs in a better life style, even if the dog wants to go to a place where he desires, he knows he belongs to someone else for a fact. He knows that without this owner, I'm not getting food. Without this owner, I'm not getting a grooming. Without this owner, I'm not getting a shelter. He knows this, and due to that, even if the leash is only seven feet in length, that dog does not want to take that eight foot extra step, because he knows that this is my owner. In the same way, when we find out, when we completely comprehend and understand and completely accept that this is my owner, meaning Maharaj and this Satpurush, then we would right away not, we would not be able to take that step in that eight foot length. That's how important it is. My mind and Atma is given to someone, then I, me and myself shouldn't stay there. When the ego for I, me and myself is gone, then God becomes very happy. And that's the fruits to completely remove that stuff God becomes happy just think about it when we in our life get married at the age of 23 4 5 6 whenever the 20s and we share our life with another partner we know we are locked in for life and we also know that we have to please that person how much do we try to please that person by getting them what they want? By working countless hours and overtime so that we can get a bigger house, we can get nicer cars, we can get nicer clothes, so on and so forth. We can get jewelry for one another and all that stuff that people do in families. But what is it for? To please the other person. But it is difficult, isn't it? It's very difficult. The demands are very high. And our capacity is not there. Due to that, it's difficult. But it is possible. 
even before you die, right? In the same way, over here, to dissolve that ego for I, me, it is out of our capacity. Because it's very, very, very difficult to do. But it's not impossible. And before we die, it could happen. Only if we walk in that direction. And that's what the Sat Purush is for. That's what Guruji has come here for. Is to help us realize our faults. To help us realize that ego is not anything good to harbor. Help us destroy that demon so that we can become one with God. And Bhagwan has sent him for this mission. So he could pray on our behalf. He could, he could, uh, he, and he does. He prays on our behalf. He gives us blessings. So we feel some kind of connection or spark there with Bhagwan. And that is all due to him, his grace. If we had not received this Sat Purush, where would we be? If one thinks in this fashion, then automatically one would start to develop the qualities of samarpan or surrendership. If one thinks about, if I had not received this satsang, if I had not received this santa samagam, if I had not received this bhagwan in the form of Piyuda Gansham Maharaj, where would I be? What would I be doing? Then automatically, that element of samarpan would kick into our heart. Without a doubt. But, we are not thinking or pondering in this way. And due to that, it's very, very difficult for this to be achieved. Moving on. When a person is new in satsang, at first he doesn't know anything. And then as the days go by, he starts to know everything. Meaning, he starts to figure things out. It's just a normal, normal action. And when that person forgets the old days, that when I be, when the I becomes capital and the person has ego for what he does, that person then eventually dies from satsang five years from now, ten years from now, or a hundred years from now, or even, at, even on his deathbed. Now, <clears throat> what this message is trying to say is that when you come into satsang, you don't know anything. You're observing everyone, you're observing everyone else's actions and figuring out that this is the way of the norms. These are the habits that are, occur. These are the rituals that occur here. This is how to talk. This is how to walk. This is how to behave. This is how we should eat. This is how we should sleep. Everything, A to Z. Satsang completely changes one's life around, completely. Now, as years goes by, we tend to capitalize that I. Meaning, we feel that we know something. We feel that it's been this many years and I am now a couple of levels up. So someone that comes below, a newcomer, we feel that they're low. And this is a disease. And due to that disease, due to that cancer, Swami here is saying that that person is bound to eventually die from satsang may it be five years from now ten years from now a hundred years from now or even on one's deathbed Sadhguru Gunatitan Swami has said that do not trust the mind not until the deathbed but after your body is burned and the ashes fly away that's how much the mind is cruel that's how much the mind is demonic that's how much the mind wants to take us away from Bhagwan and his satpurush and his, satsa, and his santo and his satsang due to that one should understand that this factor can be only developed if one feels every day that I am new in satsang, I am new. Even if that person has been in satsang for 20 years, I am new. If that occurs every day, you would have ever-growing enthusiasm. Just like how it's mentioned in Karyani third chapter that Shukmuni is a great sadhu. He is like Muktanan Swami because his enthusiasm is ever-growing. These are the words of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. Muktanan Swami's age and Shukmuni's age 
had 20 plus years indifference. Muktanand Swami's saintly virtues and Shukmuni's saintly virtues had a differentiation. Muktanand Swami's spiritual level and Shukmuni's spiritual level had a differentiation. Yet, Maharaj said that this Sukmuni is like Muktanand Swami only for one reason because his enthusiasm is ever growing. And that is something in satsang which is which needs to be kept alive and if it isn't then one will become old and die eventually as this statement refers to due to puji guruji's grace and loya dam we don't see this today when we first entered in satsang and met guruji at that time how our thoughts and mind worked or how how it should be as of right now the level should be the same. Whoever doesn't forget that level won't get ego about himself, as we mentioned. Making thousands of people satsangi is not an achievement. Making thousands of mandirs is not an achievement. Whoever wants to become an ekantik bhakta of God doesn't wish for any of these types of achievements. He does whatever he can and however much God makes him do. When people have desires to do more than their capacity, just so that their ego becomes nourished or nurtured, that's when a person gets into trouble. That's when satsang becomes kind of like poison to that person. Because when one came into satsang at first, it was like amrut, or it was the nectar, the, uh, the divine nectar. But when one starts to develop these kinds of desires and, and from these desires, fruits of ego arise in oneself, that very satsang becomes poison. And whoever drinks poison dies. In Puja Guruji's life, we can see how much he has achieved today. A person who once used to go around in trucks people's houses and got insulted so much even though he did all this for our satsang this is called the true satpurush and without egotism who came who, who came from akshardam just for everyone's liberation puja guruji and we have achieved this satpurush today and we are we are his and if he has if he has egotism in us if if he sees egotism in us then how would he feel? If we have done satsang with a satpurush like this and we still have ego, then what's the point of doing satsang? All this can only be achieved by the satpurush's grace, meaning become egoless. The satpurush's grace, blessings, asidvad, is one factor which is completely completely it, it can it can do everything it can erase everything it can destroy all of one's sins it can change one's fortune from bad to great it is one element that is such such a important important factor that if one only focuses on this in satsang, achieving satpurusha's rajipo, then one can say that one's akshardam is guaranteed. That's how much big of a factor it is. If one does not have dharma, no problem. If one does not have bhakti, no problem. If one does not have gnana, no problem. If one does not have vairagya, no problem. If one does not have prem, mahima, or, or samarpan, or anything, no problem meaning i'm giving an example these are all elements that are needed but just for this example to be proven i'm trying to help you understand this statement if one does not spin the mara a hundred maras every day not a problem if one does not sing five kirtans a day 
not a problem. If one forgets to do a Mansi Puja, not a problem. But if one forgets to attain the Rajipo of a Sat Purush, that's a problem. And just so that no one has any open loops, the way one can attain the Rajipo of a Sat Purush is to keep Dharma, is to keep Vairagya, is to keep Bhakti, is to have Gnan, is to have Samarpan, is to have and do Bhakti for Maharaj selflessly, is to sing Kirtans for Maharaj selflessly, is to do whatever they need to in Satsang to please Maharaj and Guruji selflessly. So they both go hand in hand. If you might not have it, no problem, but you need the Satpurusha's Rajipo. That, if you have that, no problem. But in order to get the Satpurusha's Rajipo, you also need Dharma, Bhakti, Gnana, Vairagya, Prem, Mahima, etc., so on and so forth. If you're new in Satsang and you're very, 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 you know, scared that, you know, how will I become a good Hari Bhagat? You know, I still have this problem, I still have that problem, I still eat outside food, I don't do the Tilak Chalno, I miss a couple of pujas in a week. On and off ongoing problems. If I have this, then what will happen to my satsang? Will I go to Akshar Dham? These doubts occur. For that answer, number one, one needs to become alert. And number two, if one has one Satpurusha's Rajipo in some way, form, and one knows it, then slowly but surely, all these gaps will be filled. Just like how a road has many, many, you can say, ditches and trenches and, 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 and you can say small hole, potholes. One time, all a, 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 a bulldozer will, or a, a dump truck will come and drop equal level concrete onto it. So then your car can ride smooth. In the same way, when those potholes become filled, then the Satpurush will become happy upon us. So it goes hand in hand. This is a, the greatest achievement is Samarpan. Samarpan meaning to have the Satpurush's Rajipo to stay as is, to stay however one is in the inside, and just like that, behave on the outside, to not ever have any kind of ego in front of santos, to behave as one is. Again, from the inside, behave and display the same virtues on the outside, and to not in play any kind of roles and not to have any kind of uh, other games played in satsang, may it be with santos or hari bhaktos, is an achievement that definitely one needs. So, coming back to our topic, samarpan is the tonic to dilute, dissolve, and completely remove ego. And when that when that happens, then the satpurush becomes happy. Maharaj becomes happy and pleased and when that happens then everything else is done there is nothing else to do and that's the period at the end at at the sentence uh, then Swami talks about the story of um, Alibai which is very very uh, long and Alibai's story is regarding Samarpan he was a just in short he was a Muslim uh, person who converted and, uh, ha and turned into the faith of Hinduism, Bhagwan Swami Narayan's devotee. And in the end of his life, he, um, he was spinning Mara and his family members asked, why are you spinning Mara? He's saying, tomorrow Bhagwan is coming to take me to his Akshar Dham. He had darshan of Bhagwan Swami Narayan and he went to Akshar Dham. This is a true story. And that was all due to his samarpan. You'll be able to read in the PDF uh, that is attached. If one does not receive a course, please email us at loyadamnj at gmail.com. And one will start receiving the course on uh, Google Drive link. And from there, they would be able to uh, you know, read the courses and take the examination, which will be taking place on December 14th or December 21st 
it is not decided but it will be emailed to all those who participate in us sabha saying this my humble jay swami